Oh yeah, this commander lift is looking real sweet. Just kidding, <laughs> I still have to do the front. Here we go, time for the front half of the lift. Hey, what's up guys, I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. I'm over here with my commander. We got the, uh, the gator over here and we got nice new fuel rims on here and we got the tires that I used to have on the Green Hornet. I put them on these new fuel wheels. These tires are 265 70 R17s. They're about 32s. We got them here in a commander with a two and a half inch, three inch budget boost. I got a video on the rear and uh, did a little work to this maybe in the beginning of the summer and uh, I kind of just sat there. Um, so it's time to finish this up. The front is still completely stock. It's on its stock 18s, normal ride height. So we're gonna have to jack this thing up and we're gonna add some parts to make this be able to fit those, uh, those sweet wheels and tires. So right, let's go take a look at the parts we're gonna have to put on this thing. We're gonna install these new OEM spec reflex struts. Got these from the local auto parts store. We have these forks. These forks came with some hardware. This is what's gonna give us our lift. And to correct for the lift, we're gonna install these really badass JBA off-road A-arms. They got the little ball joints already in. They're pretty beefy. We got some extra hardware and spacers there. They are greasable. Got little grease nubs there, little gazerk fittings. Pump in some grease. It comes with a certificate, so I'll have to put that in my file. We got some paperwork here, instructions, and looks like we got some stickers too. I like stickers. Put them on my toolbox. Hey, we got a Jesus DVD. All right, amen. Great stuff. Uh, yeah, slap these stickers on my toolbox. All right, step one, we're going under the hood. We gotta remove this reservoir. It's blocking the bolts to the shock tower. It's a 10 millimeter, a little clippy thing. And this little uh, fastener over here, we're just gonna pry that off with a little pry tool. It's threaded on this. Maybe I'll just uh, zip in like a 10 millimeter nut. I don't like these things because, hey, I got a 10 millimeter there. I can just move the tool over here and take this off. But now I gotta do this weird pry thingy and it's probably gonna break. Yeah, so I'll just zip a nut on there later. But all right, I'll just keep going with it. All right, we gotta remove this. Oh, I just might as well keep going with this. I was gonna just do this off camera, but while I'm filming, here we go. Just gonna zip these off, they're 18 millimeter. There. All right, next there's three clips. One right in here, just gonna pry this out a little bit. Second one, you gotta open up this lid. So you can get to it right in here. Pry that out. And the third one is right here. Pry this out gently. Don't want to break anything. And then this will come up. You get this whole fuse area. <laughs> Power distribution center up. Oh, there we go. This fuse box has one, two, three, four. These tabs you just push in and then it slides up and that that screw is your third screw. You should be able to take off one, two, three, ten millimeters, and then you'll be able to get to the shock bolts that are right under this shroud. There you go. You can access them right from here. 18 millimeter on a breaker bar works very nice. Got all these nuts loose. Now I'm gonna jack this bad boy up. All right, we got this baby jacked up, nice and safe. We also got it blocked, don't want it to roll. The e-brake is also on. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some PB Blast. This is some uh, blaster, it is not Simple Green. I just put it in a better sprayer bottle and I'm going to soak every single joint and then let her sit and soak and come back tomorrow. It is getting dark, so. Soak on, and I'll see you in the morning. 
All right, due to inclement weather, it's been a couple days. We'll see what's going on here. I'm gonna wanna drop this knuckle right here. We're gonna have to take off this ball joint. This is like 18 millimeter. Then we got these big bolts in here. We're gonna have to get to this clevis fork. Uh, these bolts at the bottom give a big problem. Usually they get seized on. The bolts don't come out of the bushing sleeve. A lot of times we'll have to cut them off. That's okay. I don't actually have to separate the clevis fork from the strut because I got a new strut and a new clevis fork. I'm going to try to take it off as easy as possible, make less work for me. But one other thing I'm going to have to do, bushings. So I got new lower control arm bushings. One, two, and three on each side and the lower control arm bushings are a B. Um, a lot of people just swap out the whole lower control arm. I'm gonna try to do a bushing swap, save some money. We'll see how that goes. Right now I'm gonna disassemble this whole thing. I'm even gonna take off this nut right here, this 36 millimeter axle nut. So uh, we're gonna remove that, take this apart, I'll take the brakes off and uh, we'll just strip everything down and then we'll get a good look at everything I need to replace. First, 18 millimeter. All right, this lower clevis fork bolt is a 24 millimeter. <laughs> this bolt does not want to come out. Why should mine be any different? Tie right end, 21 millimeter deep dish. Ball joint's a little loose, not terrible. And I got the caliper dangling, taking the weight off the soft liner for the time being. Lower ball joint has a nice little cotter pin and castle nut. 21 millimeter should do the job. And we got the big dog, 36 millimeter for the hub bolt. Now we're gonna remove the lower ball joint nut to save the upper for last so it doesn't fall on your hands. There's our knuckle, our rotor, our brake bracket, and our hub, chilling. <laughs> we'll just set this aside for later. Looks like these axles are still good. Pretty smooth flow. We'll leave them right where they are. Now we got a whole lot of room in here without that knuckle on. <laughs> Try to whack at this a little more with the sledge. Still no dice, so gonna have to do what everybody else does. I'm gonna cut this clevis bolt and then I'll be able to continue on. All right, you can go ahead and unfasten those strut bolts and that thing should just slide right down now. Oh yeah. There we go. Parts pile is increasing. This front lower control arm bolt can be removed with a 21 millimeter. And these last two bushings are 18 millimeter. Wow, 
one. Two. Don't. Oh. All right, we got her. All right, guys, check out this lower control arm. It is a beast. This thing takes all the way to the front suspension. These bushings are shot. Let's look at this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's where all the clunking was coming from. I'm sure of it. This is shot and mutilated now. So that's got to be changed out. And luckily for me, this ball joint was recently done. So that's good. Get that castle nut on it to protect the threads. All right, let's check these out. This lower control arm set is about $200 each. I got all six and a, a TRQ set on Amazon, I think for like about 80 bucks. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to try this crazy route. So here we go. This is a front, uh, oh yeah, this is a front lower front. This is gonna go here. We got the front lower rear. This goes there. And we got, that's another front for the other side. There, this is a front lower uh, clevis fork bushing and that's going to go here so you're going to save yourself a butt ton of money but it's going to make a whole lot more work for you don't do this if you don't have the tools to uh, press in bushings and rip out the old ones i i am a firm believer in smash out the old ones i usually use a air hammer and then you press them in nice and neatly so let's see if we can do that i hope i don't botch it because i don't want to have to buy new lower control arms so let's give this a shot so the front lower rear, this is so shot, I might be able to just rip it out. <laughs> All right, that was easy. Um, the other ones ain't gonna be that easy. wasn't terrible. I've had worse. Oh, shit. All right. Well, I got that bushing out. <laughs> oh, man. I had to make this little piece of wood here so I could actually have a nice little control arm stand. Uh, bushing is out. That was a B. Holy crap. Let me tell you. Um, was it worth it? Probably not. I jacked up the threads on my press. <laughs> and uh, I dropped my phone and cracked my screen. Plus, I probably used the good, uh, a good bit of my blade on my sawzall. So, uh, was it worth it? Was it worth the time and all these tools? No. Uh, I think next time I'm just going to get new control arms with the bushings already in it. Damn, man. Many hours later, this uh, bushing is finally in. So one in and one to go. Uh, not fun. I don't like projects that aren't fun. This isn't fun. Oh, man. Stay. <laughs> All right. We're back in business, baby. All three bushings. One, two, three. Oh, it's going to be a good day, Tater. It is the next day, and we got a lower control arm complete with new bushings. Oh, here comes the loaf. Come on, you big dog. Scoot. Oh, you parked it on my parts. Well, anyway, <laughs> it was a beast, like my dog. But I finally got in all the bushings. The clevis fork bushing, the front lower control arm bushing, and the rear lower control arm bushing. Thank you, Jesus. 
Uh, there we go. It fits much better. And uh, yeah, so what I thought long and hard about last night was uh, buying just another control arm complete with bushings and ball joints. But I have a really good ball joint here. It's greasable. Again, it's cheaper than buying all new control arms anyway. Yeah. So, all right. All right, watch out, bud. I don't want this to fall on you. It's not quite in. Let's go get my sweatshirt, okay? Thanks, Danny. Just want to line up this bushing kind of where it was. I want to keep it centered. Don't want to throw off any alignment. But of course, we're going to lift it. So that means it's going to get an alignment anyhow. Going to get this control arm sort of in its ride height. Couple more tugs on the front. Torque for good measure. We'll probably retorque this in a couple hundred miles anyway. Good. All right, man, <laughs> that's brutal. I think you should probably just buy new control arms with bushings already installed. But uh, there you go, that's like a six hour job for me, just getting this to the point where I could have purchased a $200 part and been good to go. All right, here are the upper control arms. They are identical. 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 So it doesn't really matter which one you choose for the left or for the right. I'm just gonna go with this one because it's closer. Get out of there. And uh, all right, we gotta go take out these bolts right here, the upper control arm bolts. All right, if you carefully pull back your wheel well liner, you could bungee it out of the way. This will allow you to get back here to the 18 millimeter bolt right up in there. And the nut over here, this is a 15 millimeter nut. So, time to get this bolt out. All right, the front is a little bit more of a pain to get to because it's got this wire harness in the way. So I just removed the whole wheel well lining. It's uh, not that big a deal if you have a little plastic rivet gun. If you don't, I'll leave a link in the description for you. It takes about 10 little rivets to get this guy in. They pop out easily with this little pry tool. And if you don't have one of these, I'll leave a link in the description as well. All right, so it looks like on this side, it's gonna be a little easier to shove a wrench between the wire harness and the body. We'll get it on that 18 millimeter nut back there, and then we'll hit this head with the 15 millimeter impact. See if we could get it out that way. Probably much more convenient. is in. Excellent. This project ain't easy. Split my pants. Jeep my life.
right, here we go. Fresh pair of pants and a new project. This is a little dangerous, so if you don't feel comfortable dealing with springs, don't do it. I'm going to put this spring and this top part of this, you know, unit on here. Uh, this is under a lot of pressure. If you unbolt this baby without doing a spring compressor, you will uh, shoot this thing a mile into the air or in your face or kill somebody. Don't do it. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you could buy complete units like this that have the springs. Uh, they come with fresh, uh, what is it, fresh bump stops. This is kind of grody. Maybe I could have gotten a new one, but uh, these uh, bushings aren't that bad. So uh, these spring isolators are all right. Bump stops are all right. I'm going to reuse this setup. And uh, I feel comfortable dealing with springs. I've done this before, so... Don't worry about me, guys, but please do not do this. If you're not comfortable, get yourself a whole completed unit. All right, we got ourselves a live one here. Let's carefully slide this out. Go ahead and we'll take our our decent used uh, spring isolator. Put this back on. Go off the nut. Let's get our bump stop back on. This is kind of grody. Oh well. It should be actually in there. Whatever. And we will reapply our spring. Let's make sure we line it up right. This little indent goes at the bottom of that spring. There we go. We got a successful and safe spring swap. And we're gonna put on this new Clevis fork. This is gonna give us our lift. A little comparison. Oh yeah, she hangs down at least an inch and a half. So uh, let's go put her on. We got nice included hardware, so that's cool. I'm gonna throw some anti-seize on her. Well, I guess that's it. Just gonna slide right up there. So, allow me to introduce more anti seize. I love this stuff. All right, got this on, and the included hardware is 19 millimeter. There. So let's line this up. We'll make sure we get the clevis forkies uh, facing the bushing in the right direction because oh, these have to go through the frame holes. So let's make sure we got everything good before we zip her in. Well, yahoo, guys. It's in! All the parts that I needed to complete this lift is actually in the vehicle. This is fantastic. I'm stoked. All right now I'm going to tighten down this factory nut. I like factory hardware as much as possible. And yeah, I got to tighten in these spring bolts up top. They're still waiting for me. So yeah, let's, uh, let's reassemble.
right guys, I think that's about it for today. I just gotta get in here, torque everything to spec. Gotta torque down the bowl joints, upper and lower. I still gotta torque down the old uh, bearing. What do you call that? I don't even know, I'm tired. And uh, I'm sorry guys, I apologize, I lied to you. I did not change my pants, they're still ripped. So uh, <laughs> we'll get a new pair later. Uh, I'll cut back to you when uh, when I do the other side Oh man, I gotta do this fun job all over again. So I'll tighten this up, do the other side, and I'll catch you. It'll probably be about a week or so, to be honest. It takes a lot of time, so I'll see you next weekend. Later. All right, guys. Well, it's a couple weekends later, and I finally finished the passenger side. More of the same. The uh, nonsense with the lower control arm. Man, I should have just bought completed arms, but hey... Uh, I struggled with it. I did it. Now I could tell you that it is possible. Is it worth it? Oh yeah, it's worth it. If you're strong enough. If you're strong enough, if you have the the guts for it. But uh, I don't want to do that ever again. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna say get the completed arms. Uh, here we go. Here was an issue I had. The passenger side upper A arm uh, on my commander. It is the Overland Edition. It has the uh, the advanced four-wheel drive system. It has that little nub right there for the sensor. Uh, I ordered these A-arms before my other commander was smashed. That was just a limited. It didn't have the Quadra Drive 2. Uh, so I had the, the lift kit. The commander got smashed. I bought a new commander that did have the Quadra Drive. And, well, uh, I should have upgraded. I, I forgot at that point that I needed to order the A-arms that had the little attachment to get the uh, the sensor on there. So I did a little cutting and a little welding and a little painting. Uh, but yeah, so I got that on with a little bit of a mod. No big deal. Everything else was the same except for I did accidentally chip one of the phenolic pistons in this caliper. So I had to go take out the caliper, put a new piston in. Now I'm just gonna have to bleed the brakes. Hopefully you won't have to. Be careful when you're dealing with these calipers. Make sure they're hung up out of the way. Don't kick them or drop tools at them or whatever it is I did. But yeah, huh, that's it, man. We are done. Uh, the lift is complete and I'm gonna throw a wheel on it now and we'll, uh, we'll give the old moment of truth. We'll see how it sits. I am super duper excited for this moment. All right, let's do it. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah. All right, guys, there we have it. Finally did it. I finally lifted a commander. It looks great. She's sitting pretty on just about 33s. I uh, took it for a little drive around the block after we bled the brakes. Got a slight rub on the inside of the passenger wheel well. I'll have to address that, no big deal. But I uh, can't celebrate just yet because I still gotta get this bad boy aligned. I'll go take it to the tire shop, get an alignment. I also wanna give them new tire pressure monitor sensors. We'll pop these bad boys in, get new TPMS going. And uh, yeah, what else do I need? Oh, of course we'll do a wheel balancing while we're at it, of course, but that's it, man. I am just enjoying looking through this camera at the way she sits. That's so cool, man. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Remember to like and subscribe as usual. And of course, guys, I will catch you on the next project. Peace.